And I gave you guys a heads up earlier that I may be coming on um, just to do more talking. And I was watching the videos that I recorded this morning, and it was this morning when I recorded those pretty early too. <laughs> Um, I get up early because I've got a lot of work to do. And when you are small staffed, you really, uh, you know, got to be on it. But when I, w when I was watching the other videos that I made about um, deliverance from people, I wanted to say this. I wanted to kind of add this to it if I, if I can. It's not that I've not allowed the Lord to deliver me from people in the past. It's not like this is just a new discovery and I'm just now finding out that I need this type of deliverance. No, what I'm discovering is each on each level that you go up, um, each place that God elevates you, you've got to experience, I guess, I guess, uh, deliverance on another, on another uh, plane. What I mean by that is, okay, when I first started preaching, I had to get over the whole women are not supposed to preach and um, trying to be um, more or even less than God had called me to be. You know, because when you're young in ministry, everybody kind of wants to shape you into their image other than allowing God to form you and shape you in His image. It's very important. So all of you guys and, and gals that are out there and you're preachers and you're young and you're just um, excited and on fire and anointed I want to say a big God bless you to all of you guys and uh, I want to say too just know who you are because people will try to shape you and mold you and create you into something that God may not be fashioning you to be um, so I had to get delivered from that and just hearing because when you're prophetic and when you perceive things and when you see things in the spirit you can hear conversations that people have had about you right before you entered into the room I know that sounds really weird but when you enter into the room it's like you can hear your name in the air have y'all ever ever dealt with that um, you can also sense when Someone is all smiles, but on the inside, they are not prophetic rejection on an entirely different day. Because that one would take the rest of the evening to probably discuss. But when you feel rejected for being who you are, you know, for being able to hear from God and um, experience supernatural things, oftentimes with that comes rejection because you're not understood and people don't always um, know how to take you um, and so being delivered in that sense also being delivered to the point to, uh, to where you can preach the word of God without fear or favor of man and my brother always says that I love you brother you know who I am and I know who you are I don't know if you want your name out there on YouTube, so I'm not going to call you. But if you see this and you don't mind me saying who you are, just know that your sister loves you. And he always tells me whenever I get ready to preach, sis, preach without fear or favor of man. And I remember that. And um, you've got to do that. you got to go on and just say what God said to say. Say it how God said to say it. And don't worry about people. They'll be all right, you know people come around <laughs> they I mean and this may seem completely cold but people get over it you know just like I do when our feelings are hurt because the word has challenged us to come up in a certain area and we might not want to deal with it we might not want to deal with the conviction that we're facing and we may get mad at the people who deliver the word of the Lord to us and help us to try to get ourselves together we may not like that and guess what? Um, preachers can feel and they can sense when you are hating them because of the kind of word that they're preaching. So that's the kind of deliverance I think we need as Christians. And not just preachers, but people. I mean, you know when somebody's not really digging what you're saying. 
And when you know you're trying to tell them the truth and you're trying to do it in love and they're just like whatever because they're upset. The word of God has convicted them and kind of rubbed their flesh the wrong way and they're not feeling that at all. And when I use the terminology flesh and spirit, I want you to understand that I'm talking about the difference between being led by the spirit of God and led by your human nature because those things the Bible says are at war with each other. And so that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about when I when I when I say that. Um so having to be delivered from that, it's almost like you care but you gotta not care about what people say. And you gotta sometimes it's good to be aware of it so you can go on and take it to the Lord and pray and allow the Lord to minister uh, to you as a person and still go on out there and preach the word of God. And, and the Lord is really um, impressed upon my heart and my spirit to um, go on and say it like he said it. Sometimes I think preachers can be so caught up in trying to impress people and trying to uh, get invitations to preach until they compromise the integrity of what God has actually told them to deliver to the people. If God told you to go to a church and say repent because if y'all don't get it together, God's going to judge this house, then that's what you got to say. And you can't really help it. You can't really help it if they're not going to want to, you know what I'm saying, have you back for the next conference. <laughs> and so, I mean, we, we really need to allow the Lord to set us free from caring about what people have to say because we can't always help it. Um, God knows we do our best to walk in holiness, but people say what they want to say anyway. God knows we live a life. I'm saying we. I'm 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 used to using the word and the terminology we because oftentimes I'm speaking on behalf of a body. Uh, but I can say oftentimes I on this one. I can say oftentimes I've tried my best with all that is humanly possible and with the aid of the Holy Ghost to walk as God has called me to walk and to allow the Lord to be my keeper. And he has been my keeper. I want to throw this in there too. I want to encourage young people in ministry. And I want you, and just anybody who's watching, that God is a keeper. I've got the testimony of the fact, and I talked about it, I think, earlier today, of the fact that God has kept me. He's kept my, my mind uh, on him. He's kept my body. What do I mean by that? The Lord has preserved me. Um, and I am waiting on my husband and have been doing so for 27 years and in november i on november 28th i will be 28 and so for 28 years the lord has kept my body and you have heard that from me amen you've heard that from me yes the lord has and so uh let me just make that plain for somebody who still has question marks floating through the air Yes, I am a virgin, V-I-R-G-I-N, praise God. And I'm not afraid or ashamed to say that. I thank and praise God that he's kept my mind and my body. We used to sing a song back in holiness. My body belongs to God. My whole body belongs to God. Oh, y'all don't sing that no more. <laughs> and we would sing that and we meant it. And so God has kept me. Praise God. So... Praise the Lord. That testimony um, is something that I shared all across the country for those of you guys who have followed our ministry. And I, you know, people won't just get up on camera and say stuff like that unless...